Okay. Now, previously we stopped at these slides where we calculate the reliability of the system. So there's only two equation for reliability. Either is zero or parallel. Huh? So for zero, for series, R system equal to R1 multiplied by R2 until Rn. And if you want to have a backup system, so your system will become one minus one minus R1, one minus R2, and so on. Okay. So previously we stopped at these two equations. So once we have the reliability test, once we have the reliability test, we go into functional design. So reliability also can be defined by M MTBF, mean time between failure. So mean time between failure is from the start until it fails. What is the time? It takes to fail. Huh? Okay. So MTBF is reciprocal of failure rate, one over failure rate. Huh? Okay. So for example, if your laptop battery fails four times in 20 hours of operation, okay, fail four times. So the failure rate will be four over 20. Because your laptop failed four times in 20 hours, so you take four divided by hours. So like how many times per hour? You calculate how many times per hour. So it's a 20%. So inverted of this, this number, one over 0 0.2, you get five hours. So mean time of the mean time of the failure, mean time between failure is five hours. So um this is how you calculate. Lah. So this one is when you calculate the MTBF, means you need to stand by your services for customers, call, and all this. Okay. Or this number also can tell you how long you need to stock up, stock up your, your inventory uh, storeroom, eh? or the component, how long you need to stock up, and so on. Right. Uh, for example, our Fab Lab. The laser cutter is, is shut down because of the laser tube uh, failure. So uh, because they didn't stop up the, the team didn't stop up the, the parts. Okay. Okay, so this one are the third steps to improve the reliability. First, simplified design, improve reliability of individual component. Okay, so if it's series, then you improve individual. Or you have a backup, right? You have a backup. Pro, uh, uh, you have a you you design the manufacturing process more easier and uh, easier to maintain, and then or you train the user to use it properly. So now today, why you when you buy a car or expensive machine, they give you a user manual or there's a training what you do. For example, if you buy a Ferrari, they have uh, one driver experience. Then only they. Okay. Sensibility, this one you read, is serviability. Right? So now today, the example for maintainability is the way you design now today all the laptop. You, have. you come with the modular, you just slot in and tack up. So if the memory broken, then you just change the memory and so on. Okay. Even now today, your car, all the components, they are modular. For example, your radio set, all these, they actually is plug and play. It's just connected to a wire. If it's broken, you just plug out the radio and uh, put in the new one. Huh? 
So all this you read now. Okay. Another one is system availability SA. Give you by this equation, MTBF divided by NTBF plus MTTR. MTTR is mean time to repair. Okay, now what, how to use this, this equation? MTBF is one over the, the failure rate. So MTD, MTTR, system availability, equal to MTBF, MTBF plus MTTR. This is repair, this is failure. So if you look at this example, so we have provider ABC and each provider have his MTBF, uh, MTTR, okay? So MTBF means up, for example, A, 60 hours, what it means. Every 60 hour, they will show something broke down, all right? So MTTR means they can uh, repair in four hours, for example. Huh? So, okay, MTTR is a uh, mean time to repair, huh? mean time to repair. Okay, so uh, Amy must choose a service provider for his company e commerce site. Other factor being equal, she will base his decision based on uh, availability, server availability or service availability. Given the, the following server performance, which provider he should choose. So you just plug in this formula. SA equal to MTBF divided by total of MTBF plus MTTR. You just take the ratio, right? This one you put on the top, then bottom this one plus this one. Okay. So the first one is 94%. Okay. Second one is 95%. Third one is 96%. Okay, it's just application of the SA system availability system. Right. So Amy should choose provider C because the ser service availability is 96%. So most of the time, if you anything your server down, uh, you're still able to use it. Huh? You're still able to use it. Okay, this one another exercise, still the same. So you have three. Three scenario, you have MTBF, MTTR. Uh, you see MTBF and MTTR basically, it just tests you this simple equation. Find the ratio between the MTBF and the total of these two numbers. Okay, so basically it just give you a, 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 a scenario, then give you do, uh, do a decision, which one to pick, okay? which one to pick. So same procedure, you, do the calculation. First company give you 95%, star give you 90%, cable X give you 93%. So from here, uh, of course you choose the first one, the highest one, okay? Another one, usability. Usability is uh, how easy is, is used, right? So functional, functional design with all the, all the tools that you see on the screen here, right? It's easy to use design, means it's intuitive. Um, once you get it, you know how to, how to open it, how to power on, how to uh, open the things and so on, how to operate. It's very uh, intuitive. Huh? Now we go into the production design. Now we're still at the uh, rapid prototyping. Huh? So production design is, is the process to make the products. Okay, all this you read. Huh? Okay, so recommend process in the production design, simplify, standardize, modular, and design for manufacture. These are the four uh, keywords for production design. You simplify the process, you standardize the process, you put it in the modular. Modular means one process, one process, one process, right? Uh, and design for manufacture. Okay. Simplified means you reduce the number of parts or option, avoiding tools or separate fastener or adjustment. This is simplification. You take out the the screw, 
or you just use spring mechanism, you just slot in and snap, right? Right, if you're familiar with your, your laptop, when you install your RAM, you just push in and the two hook will mount on the uh, memory, memory card. So that is the simplification process, right? Simplification. So let's say we we practice, give you a scenario, uh, how you come up with the approach in the production design. Okay, so this one may be in, of course, in a, a question four or five, question four or five in final. So it asks you to how you how you come up with the production design. You go through these four process simplifications. So let's say you're having a toolbox that you look at the screen here. So the, this toolbox come with original design. So, and you need to assembly with the axle and one part, two part, three parts, and then the screw with the washer and all this. So original design, you want to uh, uh, assemble this, this uh, component. It takes 84 seconds to assemble, to assembly. Okay, so the company want to increase the productivity by using automated assembly. So they, they let's say they manufacturing the parts and they want to make it faster. They want to use a robot or robotic system, automatic system. So you need to come up with a proposal how to make it automation. How to does it wise to use automation? or there's more simple way. So our approach is use simplification. So initial design content as this one, right? So there are 24 common parts. So if you count the bolt and nuts, there are 24. Bolts and nuts, they are common, common nuts and require 48 seconds to assembly. So if you count like including the big body, so if you look at the, BOM, uh, BOM in the technical drawing, bill of materials, you will see 42, uh, 24 parts. Okay, so what you what you can do to improve the design? If you are the uh, engineer at that production floor and your manager asks you to simplify or to improve the efficiency, how, what, 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 what can you improve? What can you improve? Let's say you're designing a toolbox. Huh? The shape's still there. You cannot change the shape. What can you do to improve the efficiency during assembly? You're now focusing on the production design phase, rapid prototyping. You're designing the specification for production process. Now, you 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 do the first run, you need 84 seconds to assembly. So what can you do to improve the process? Like what? Okay. Okay, so assembly two. Okay. So you're changing on a two. Okay, what else? else okay reduce by how when you reduce you still need to hold a component right how do you hold the things you do welding or what you do welding spot welding all this okay makes sense What else? What else idea you have? Nuts. The way you assembly. Okay. So the design does not appear to be complex for manual assembly, but can be quite complicated for a robot to assembly. Right. Okay. So you need to make adjustment whether you need an automate machine or not. Okay. So 
The engineer take this part and simplify the toolbox by molding the base as one piece and eliminate the fasteners. So it removed the fasteners. Okay. It removed the fasteners. It changed the two sides into one piece. Means it used metal sheet uh, process uh, bending, uh, metal bending process. Okay. So it removed the fasteners. It come with the bodies and previously it, it need uh, it need to produce a, a tools for the metal bending process. Okay, but of course in the assembly, when it come to this part, they don't need to assembly the screw because the screw the screw assembly the screw actually takes the time more than it should be. When you remove the 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 critical process, like for example this case. Is the assembly of the screw nuts? They take more times, and you remove the bolts nut. It changed from eighty-four second to twelve second to assembly, including it takes the plastic insert on the top to insert and lock the handle. Okay, so the function still there. It still has a toolbox, but you change the manufacturing process. Uh, we are now focusing on the rapid prototyping process on the other side. Okay, just now it's on the design. Design is reliability and all this. Then we go to production design, more on the process. Okay. okay so this one, all this lah. Okay. So this represents significant gain in the production from 43 assembly per hour to 30 assembly per hour, uh, 300. Okay. So by this simple modification or simplify the process, you can improve the productivities, for example. Okay. Now, after the design, the revised design, the team managed to further reduce from 12 seconds to 4 seconds. By how? By removing the plastic insert into automatic uh, insert or uh, there's a spring mechanism where you just need to swap in the handle and it lock. Okay, you just need to push this handle in and it lock inside the location. Okay, so this one, you only need four seconds to assembly. From 84 seconds, all the bolts and nuts into four seconds assembly. So this is a simplification process. Um, so you only need two parts. Okay, so from, 24, uh, from more than 24 parts into two parts, you just need to have a base and the spindle or the handle. Okay. Right. Okay, so when you reduce to four seconds, you can do 900 assembly in one hour. Right. Uh, so with this final design, the team finally agreed that assembly was too simple for a robot and you don't need to buy a robot for this process. Just need to hire a uh, cheap labor just to push the thing in or just to design a machine, a conveyor, come to that, lock the thing and push the thing, right? Uh, so sometimes uh, operator or human is cheaper than a robot. You pay like one hour, 20 ringgit per hour or 50 ringgit per hour. A normal operator will be 20 ringgit per hour. So you 20 ringgit per hour, you can assemble things like that. It's quite a good good deal. Okay, so the de final decision is that they don't need automation. So this example. Huh? Another one is standardization. Means you make common parts or interchangeable parts is used. Okay. Standardization, for example, your automotive car, the tire size you use, any type of tires also can make the vehicle move. So when you design automotive, you don't need to worry about the wheel size and all this. It's already standard, right? Okay, all this, lah, you read. Lah. So when you have standardization, interchangeable, for example, your laptop battery, all this, ah. You just plug and play, slot in, and you can use. Uh, okay. 
Um, for example, the LED all down a day, you just plug in and plug out. Huh? Okay. Modular design, this one, just now modular design uh, is the laptop design, the, your process, your, your PC processor, motherboard and all this, they are actually modular. So for example, modular design, I give you the Toyota. Uh, modular design, for example, the chassis is almost same. The main body frame actually almost same. Okay. Uh, for example, Toyota Camry, Corolla and Lexus, they share the same body chassis. Okay, they share the same body chassis. They only change the cosmetic and the fender and all this. Okay, so that's why uh, when you have a modular design like this, you make you cut costs and you make more, more money because you you don't need more process for the body chassis. Okay. Uh, so another one is, uh, you know, soup, this one, Campbell, right? So Campbell Soup Company, they also make modular design by only need four basic broth, beef, chicken, tomato, seafood. Then they mix, they, they sell a lot of variety of uh, broth for you. Okay, so this is how they make modular design for soup. Okay. Now, for example, the one that we give you in the morning, the milk, uh, the milk and the chocolate, and that one also you can elaborate. Like. So you can use on the production design, you use modular design where you have the standard milk and chocolate. Then you mix with dark chocolate or what chocolate, what chocolate. Uh, and maybe you can add in fruit and all this for healthy uh, marketing point and all this. Lah. So by this four broad, they can sell 125 variant, uh, products. Okay, they mix based on the ratio, they sell you something else, right? Design for manufacturer or DFM. This one, when you join uh, other companies, uh, out when you graduate, when you work in the factory, um, you will see this word DFM, design for manufacturing, means that uh, your tooling should be easy, should be able to interchange, meaning the assembly process, the jig and all this, you should be able to pull in and pull out to change the process. Like for example, metal stamping and bending process. You should be able to have this design for manufacturing. Huh? So this one you read. Huh? So successful DFM give you this one. Um, so there are some guidelines to promote good design practice. So this one, two, three, four, five, six. So you read lah. Okay. So we already come to these two, design specification and manufacturing specification, then come to final test and uh, final design. Okay, final design is the output of your uh, uh, pilot run and final test. So you build your test. Okay. Several iteration, uh, several design and changes. Right. Design change, change uh, engineering change order, ECO, is a major source of delay and cost overrun by the production process. So if you work in a factory, you are R&D department, you come up with the technical drawing, especially there is a revision column there. Revision one, two, three, and then there is item one. What is changes? Two. What is changes? Three. What is changes? Okay. So when you work in the design department or production pro, uh, department, please read carefully when you are designing the tooling or your customers' products. Okay, and read carefully every time when they revise the revision, please make sure they update here. Okay, uh, my first job as a project engineer, uh, there's some incident where the customer's site, they forget to update the revision here. So when we send the product over there, they, they have to accept our 
production unit. In fact, the whole lot they cannot use because they forget to change the revision here, especially the boat and nut location. You may you imagine you are manufacturing the hard disk drive, uh, the hard disk, the hard disk screw and bow nut, and you change design. You cannot screw in the bow and nut by shifting the location of the bow and nut. Okay. So that is important, uh, this one. Uh. So all this you read. Okay. So we have done with this, this uh. So this morning I did tell you how to write the AC for this five process already. Okay. Uh. All right. So next one we go into process planning, analysis, and technology decision. This basically some uh, basic calculation, uh, more on the cost and process. Uh. So this one is a chocolate. Uh, video, uh, chocolate manufacturing. Um, this one you you watch lah. Basically, it just tell you how how people make chocolate. And then now's the day why why chocolate right right in the aluminium foil and not other other things. So it just explain everything in this video. Uh, okay, so process plannings. All this uh, definition. Huh? So process is a task with input and output. Okay, process is a task with specific input and output. So this morning we deal with five phases, five process. So each process have input and output. Process design. The word you add in the design already. You have to define how they are being done. The method. Okay, design link with the method. Process strategy. Strategy is approach to produce or meeting the uh, the goods or products or services. Okay, so strategies, process strategy defined as all these are uh, vertical integration, vertical integration uh, from from the top to bottom, each stage production process, capital intensity resources, capital means the resources. Process flexibility. This one is a uh, flexibility. Here is respond to changes. Is able to respond to changes. Consumer improvement. This one is a uh, you put in the role of consumer or uh, customers inside the production process. Means you always when you test the product, you call in your prospect and test the products. Okay, process planning. The word planning, you change the design into instruction. Okay. Process planning, you change design into instruction. Okay. So there are three lah, outsourcing, process, process plan, and so on. Okay, what mean by vertical integrate integration? A firm that sell products, assembly the product, make all the parts and extract the raw material completely. This is called vertical integrated process. So here, the cow, until you make the raw slice while you beef meat, for example. Okay. So this is called vertical integration. Horizontal integration is oil and gas industry. Horizontal means you work parallel, where each of the station workstation fit into the silo here. Okay. So purchase of competing companies, the same industry and so on. But basically you work parallel. Okay. okay. So most company cannot or will not make all the parts that go into a products. So now today what we do is this they, they need a strategy so that re, they reduce the work they need to do. For example, now the day they sign contract with the farmer, then the farmer supply cattle, then they send to a slaughterhouse. So there's another supplier. So when the supplier do the thing, they put in into the fridge or the sender or the logistic partners. So for the partners, they go to the so logistics sent to the packing plants and they sell it to the end user. Okay. So 
all this to read. Huh? This is outsourcing decision. Okay, so outsourcing decision, a uh, uh, few factors. This one, quality, speed, Okay, so this one you read lah. Uh, the factor. So reliability in manufacturing, you how you sell your reliability, you go for ISO standard. Okay. Now, for example, currently in T, we are go through another serum audition. We trying to get ISO, a new ISO a license. ISO they have lots of uh, ISO standard lah. So now in T we try to get an, another new new uh, ISO standard in education. Okay. okay. Now this is the qualitative uh, qualitative uh, chart where you differentiate four, four parts of uh, definition. Right? Production process you can break them into projects, batch max and continuous production by looking at their volume and standardization okay what I mean by standardization a process that can repeat over and over again normally this one is the standardization is a machine process this one is a volume of your output so project usually they are one-time production to a custom order they call projects for example, ship, you make ship one at the time, right? Production of ship. Batch, this one you use like bread, for example, break, right? Do batch by batch. Okay. The volume is low and the demand fluctuate for batch production. Huh? Mass production like glove. Okay, my glove. The standardization is a bit high and the volume is high. Okay. So the, the characteristic is product demand is stable, product volume is high. Okay. If the question mentioned production uh, demand fluctuate, then it become batch. Production, huh? Continuous is like oil and gas industry. You need to con uh, you continuous supply your things, uh, solar panel and all this. Okay. Uh, so you operate twenty four hour one. Uh, it's a continuous process. Okay. So this a uh, table summarize everything from type of products to example this one go and read ah. so this one all this you can read okay okay next one is uh, some analysis call it break even break even means your cost and your profit meet at the middle point means they balance your your capital and also your uh, your your revenue Okay, so four component in break even analysis only look at four parameter volume, cost, revenue, and profit. What be my volume? Volume is number of unit, usually. They call it number of unit. So if you work in industry, each of this name, it name the size of the volume. It can be item, it can be pack, it can be case, it can be pallet. Okay. So usually when you do import export, it come in this size, huh? Pallet. Cost, it can be fixed cost, for example, equipment. Right? Variable cost, for example, labor. Right. So the total cost, you take fixed cost plus variable cost. Okay. Total cost, you take fixed cost plus variable cost. So we have this formula, total cost. This is another simple formula. So the cost equal to fixed cost plus variable cost. Variable cost, why in front got one 
constant because it's variable, you need to multiply by the volume. Okay, or the unit. Okay, so this one fixed cost means uh, you just need to buy one machine and then uh, variable, for example, how many operator you need to operate that one and you charge how many rate per hour, for example. Okay, so this is the first question. Revenue. Revenue is, is the money that come into your pocket. Eh? For example, you sell burger that day, the cash that inside the drawer is 500. 500 is a revenue. It's not your profit. Eh? Revenue is how many cash you pull inside the drawer. Okay. Uh, total revenue is uh, revenue is per unit. Total revenue is the whole volume. So total revenue is V multiplied by the PP is a uh, price per unit. Okay. So break even, this one must equal to this one. Okay. This one equal to this one. Okay. If you look at the form of these two equations, they are linear equation, right? Can you see that there are linear equation? Y equal to ms plus c. Y equal to mx plus c. This one also same. Y equal to mx plus c, no c. C is zero. Intersection zero. Means revenue, if you don't sell anything, zero. Lah. Okay, you won't like, before start, got, already got profit, cannot. Lah. Cannot. Lah. Okay, profit is your revenue minus your cost. Okay, profit is revenue minus cost. Okay, so if you take these two formula, you plug into the formula, you get the one you see on the screen there. Lah. Okay, so how do we apply these two? Huh? You need to know how many you need to sell to break even. So you take total revenue equal to total cost, total revenue equal to PC. How do how you know your total revenue? Volume multiplied by the piece of uh, equipment that you uh, you buy. Equal total cost have two cost have variable and fixed cost. Fixed cost multiplied by variable cost. Okay, V is the same. Here you got volume. So you pull your volume to, together, you bracket. So the volume you need to break even, you just pull this one to right hand side. Okay, you get the right. Or you just need to memorize this one. Total revenue equal to total cost. Then remember the equation for PR and PC. Then from there, there's one unknown inside the formula. You just find the unknown. Lah. Okay. okay, so give you an example. For example, two partners, Tavis and Jeff, they want to start up a new company selling the uh, stand-up pedals, uh, SUP, uh, the stand-up pedals, uh, and sell it to the surfer, sell it to the end user. So this is the uh, upright pedals or stand-up uh, SUP, uh, stand-up uh, pedal. So it look like this. Okay, it look like this. So they want to sell this, uh, this, uh, these items. Okay. So we apply the formula. They want to see like how many they need to sell to break it open. So this one is all the introduction. Normally you'll see in the test. So it does induction. Uh, just to kill your one minute time to read. Okay. So unlike surfboard for market, Surfboard is 500 to 1,000, but pedal boards, they are so 100 to 400. Okay. So, Travis and Jeff, they are starting up. So, they anticipate, means they are going to sell their products for 100 each. Travis estimate fixed cost for it and space will be 2,000. Fixed cost, it already given you here. Material and labor cost run 50 per unit. So if you see per unit, 
is usually is a variable cost. This one. Okay, variable cost. What volume of demand were necessary for Travers and Jeff to break even of their new adventure? Okay, we will use graph to help us. Huh? We establish graph. Of course, this one you, you can calculate. Okay, fixed cost is 2000. Price is you, you, you sell at 100 per box. Variable cost is 50 per unit. So you, you plug in, you can you can write TC equal to TR and then rearrange, you get V equal to CF divided P minus CV, or you can memorize this one if you want. Okay. All right. So you put in the numbers, the V will be 40 units to break even. Okay. So once you have 40 units of break even, can you can you find it in the graph? The answer is yes. Again, just now is y equal to ms plus c. The purple color is the revenue. It is how you find revenue. V multiplied by a single piece of uh, work. V multiplied by p. So when it reach 40, uh, you can you can plug in uh, so you can plug the so the revenue line right from 0 10 20 30 40 50 up to some numbers you should be able to plot two line and then use your ruler to draw then here you write uh, this is the total revenue equation equal to v multiplied by p okay then the red color is also y equal to ms plus c your C is 2,000. Y equal to MX plus C. Your C is 2,000. M you can find. CV is given. Okay. So when you have two intersect, there will be one intersection point. This is your break-even point. And you drop down. This is a break-even number. Okay. So during the test, what is expected from you? You need to draw this graph showing the equation for the line and then show the working that both actually meet at, for example, this example, 40 units. Yeah. Okay. All this you know already, lah, the expert in the graph. Already. Okay. So this is a Travers plan, okay? So Travers name is mentioned. Travel, this is Travers plan. Okay, now, now to another partners already, Jeff. This is Travers plan. Jeff come up with a new idea. Jeff is more adventurous. He believed that he can sell more than 14 units. So propose, he proposed spend straight away buy a good machine, 10K uh, automate machine that will reduce the material and labor cost from 50 to 30 per bot. The bot will sell for same $100 regardless of manufacturing process is chosen. Compare the two process and determine at what level of demand each process would be preferred either Travers plan or Jeff plan. You already calculated for Travers already. Now you do proposal for B. Okay, so this is Travers, uh, this is a Travers plan. You include, now you do the same for Jeff plans. Huh? So Jeff plans, he sure that they need to break 40 units. Okay. And they need to spend 10k to buy a machine, and the the labor cost or variable cost become 30 per box. Is Jeff a good plan, right? And you need to make a scenario when you need to use Jeff plans, when you need to use Travel's plan. Okay. Huh? So you compare to.
where two people, which one is good? Or where is the decision point between the two people? How you do? You take 2000 plus 50V, which is your total cost equation. 2000 plus 5V, that is process A, traverse plan. It must equal to process B, which is 10,000 machine and 30 multiplied by volume. This process is to calculate, this is not break even, uh, this to find decision point where you, lis you listen to Jeff or li you listen to Travis. Okay, so you do the calculation, any one unknown, you want to find a V. Okay, the V is 400 units. Okay, meaning, the total cost between the two shareholders will be the same when they reach 400 units or they sell 400 units. Okay. If the demand is less or equal to 400 bots, you choose Travers plan. Okay. Why? Why you choose Travers plan when you drop less than 400 units? Why? You think of money. La. Why? Why you, why you choose A when you have 400 units and not process B? Huh? Huh? No, think about money. You think, uh, you think in their shoes, la. when it's less than 400, the capital, how much capital you need, or who make money. Okay, so it's greater than 400, you choose B. Why? You establish using this graph. The left hand side, 2000 plus 50V, this one is process A line. So this is travels line, tra uh, travels plan. Another line for process B is 10,000 plus 30V. You establish another line, orange line. You know that the, 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 the argument point or the decision point is 400. Okay. The axis is plotted total cost versus number of unit. If you are A until, if you're blue color, you should be able to find the total cost of this one and total cost of this one. So when your volume less than 400, you choose A because your total cost is less than orange color. You can see, right? Orange color is this area. Okay, you can, you can calculate total cost also. One by one. Then what is the total cost for A? What is the total cost for B? But from this graph, you know that orange color always higher than blue line when they reach 400. Because the money you need to put in is less when if you uh, produce or you sell less than 400. Okay. But when you able to sell more than 400, you listen to Jeff, you listen to process B. If you feel so confident that you're able to find uh, either to sell 400 units, then you go and buy machine. Because after 400, you're actually making money. Already. The cost of A when it pass 400 is higher than process B. Yeah, so I hope this graph you're able to, to see. Uh. 
So if this kind of question come out, we expect you to plot this graph and this graph. And then tell why, why or at what situation, like for example, less than 400, you listen to who? Uh, at what scenario you listen to another one? Okay, so this is a linear form. Uh, if you're weak in quadratic, go home and find out what is the shape of the quadratic. Huh? Okay. okay, so this is a, a cost analysis. So this is a process selection. Cost uh, analysis, this one, of course, uh, there's a Microsoft Visual, or you need to subscribe, you need to buy if you want to use this one. This is, uh, they give you the process flow maps and all this. Okay. Okay, process plan, they are document. Process analysis, they are examination. Yeah, examination. So all this you read, huh? the steps of the process building the flow chart. Okay. So if you're doing your FYP now, this one will, will help you in building your FYP, your research flow chart. Okay, you determine your objective, you determine the process boundaries, what the unit that you use, you decide what kind of chart, right? Each chart has its own meaning. Decision usually is the uh, diamond and also this one, right? Uh, so they, they, they also, they have a free, free access of online sources. You can go and have a look. Um, then the process, how you collect data, how you met, met by the process, how you validate and so on. Okay, so for example, this is a Big Mac McDonald process, assembly process. So they have a first layer, second layer, and complete Big Mac. So first layer, they combine all these all this, uh, all these uh, ingredients. They reach first layer. They build the second layer. Then they combine first and second to become a complete. Okay, so this is for food processing. Okay. All right, so this one is another one, uh, operation sheet for plastic parts. Okay. So this is a uh, video. Uh, of course, this video don't have a uh, proper PPE, but important is uh, plastic injection molding, just in case you didn't know what is plastic injection molding, right? So there is a machine here. Then this this uh, shaft will go in and press the things, and the plastic will So when they pull out the things, uh, then the thing will drop. Uh. So of course the PPE is not is not observed or it's not following. Right? So process flow chart, they have a lot of presentation, right? So this is one of it. Uh, you have standardized symbol and all this. Lah. Okay. So we have uh, operation, transport, inspect, delay, storage. So for example, one operation, you this is the Apple process. You operation, you unload the Apple from truck, time is 20 minutes. Then you travel, you move the Apple from inspection, from the farm to inspection station. You put in, you take transport. Then how many you, how, how what is the distance you move? All right, then you go to inspect. Then what do you inspect? Wait, inspect, sort, 30 minutes. Then you move to storage, you go back to the arrow here, how many distance you travel and so on. Okay. So this is Apple. Lah. So just in case you don't know how people process Apple. I think I should, I should open the...
So the apple you eat actually has got a wax one. If you don't know. So, so another one, uh, process analysis, this one also you read, there is a process from, uh, this is inside the restaurant, from customer, waiter, salad chef, and dinner chef. So how they go around. Uh. Okay. okay. So this one, uh, in the previous class, I asked them to go and build this one, but for your class, I, you don't need it. Now, process innovation happen in response to a breakthrough, a breakthrough goes for rapid dramatic improvement process. So y-axis is a performance and the time. So when there's a breakthrough, there's a performance increase in a very short time. That, uh, that is how we identify a breakthrough uh, in all this. Huh? So process innovation, also known as business process re-engineer, BPR, process the uh, redesign or restructuring and so on. Okay, this one you read. Huh? Okay, so they are also the steps for innovation. Process or innovation. So from strategy, goal and so on. Okay. This one also you read. Huh? So principle in process innovation got 10 steps here. 10 principle. Okay, this one also you read. Huh? Okay, so this one also read. So there are one, two, three, four, five, and full skill implementation. This is a process innovation. Huh? Okay, so I will go very fast. So technology decision, you need to justify the technology. Okay. So this one is alternative capital investment, capital budgeting techniques, uh, several costs, annual saving, all this one. So this is now the day what you see, right? Um, and this is the roadmap for e-manufacturing. What I mean by e-manufacturing, it consists of four main pillars, product process, manufacturer, and information technologies. So you fit ITs inside the process to produce product, process, and manufacture. So IT means all this. Lah. You have all these technologies or processes. Manufacturer, you have all this. For example, CNC machine, robotics, process, you have all the CAM, CAD CAM. Product is a CAD and all this. Lah. Okay. This one also you read. Lah. Okay. So what is IPPD? Okay, we go a little bit deep. Uh, maybe we end our lecture another 20 minutes. Okay, then we end earlier. Huh? Right. Now, IDDP, we have this diagram. Okay, we have this diagram.
So when, if the question asks you to explain what is IPPD, you refer to this diagram. If the question asks you, uh, okay. So early morning, you have five process, difference from uh, idea generation until the production. This one is IPPD, integrated product design process. Uh, you have four stage, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Okay, stage one is this, this column here. Stage one, you establish strategy, you identify customers, you define products. Then you either dispose or recycle the customer feedback. Okay, once you have this one, you go into stage two, you generate feasibility design. Then you go into evaluate, you go to the third stage where you evaluate, test the process. Uh, BFX is a, also is a process analysis. Then go into uh, documentation. Stage four, then uh, go to stage three, go to stage four is manufacturing already. Okay. Uh, right. So for your class, I will prefer to ask you the this morning one. Uh. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Now, this one is uh, another uh, life cycle cost at various states of product realization, concept, design, production, and post-production. This is product use and support. So this is accumulated percentage of uh, life percent cost. Um, there are two lines there. One is this line, another is another line. Huh? So what this um, graph want to tell you is that if you want to make changes, make before you go into production. Okay. If you want to make changes, make before the production. In this graph is tell you make changes before design and development. But during concept time, you make changes. Then after that, you can still make changes, but um, you will be spending a lot of time recti rectifying the issues. Huh? This one you read. Huh? Okay. Slow down. Okay, so this is uh, inside I, IP square, D square is IPPDD, uh, Integrated Process Design and Production. So you need all these criteria to develop product faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, summarize is that you need communication, right? And your team member should work part-time, uh, sorry, full-time. So three factor for new products, balance, you need balancing one of the three factor, development speed, product cost, product performance, and quality. So this one you read. Huh? Okay. Product realization, you have all these four stages. So again, you just keep recycling the, the whole the whole uh, flow chart. But this one, I just uh, ask you guys go home and read as your homework. Uh -huh. okay. So there are tasks when you develop a, pro a pro products using IPPDD method. So there's a checklist for product design, this role, quality plan, this role, social design, this role, manufacturing, and so on. Okay, there's a checklist there. Right, so stage one, what they do, stage two, what they do, stage three, what they do, stage four, what they do. Okay, everything is inside the slides. Huh? Okay. Stage one, stage two, concept. 
stage three design and manufacturing, stage four product launch. Okay, the next one is just on motivation talk, how to become creative and all this. Uh. This one also I will skip. Uh. I'll go very fast. Uh. Right. So active listener, they should have thus all these followings. And there's an interaction guideline for teamwork. So these are the ground rules for teamwork. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. What is a team le team leader characteristics? Just now is a teamwork. You have all these characteristics. Then what is a leader, team leader characteristics? You have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, read now. Okay. Then communication, intellectual standards uh, uh, for reasoning and oral written communication. They should have clarity, accuracy, and precision. And relevance. Uh. CAPR, clarity, accuracy, precision, and relevant. This one is for the communication between the team member. Okay, they should be clarity, accurate, precision, and relevant. Sir. That breath and logic and all this, uh, they have a lot of factor there. Okay, creativity, uh, this one you read, uh, creativity. So, five. In psychology, uh, what is psychology? Creativity got five five stages of process. Recognition, preparation, incubation, illumination, verification. This one you read. Uh. Okay. One is uh, appearance of ideas. They have, uh, means you want to have a brainstorming process. They will go through these five stages process. Okay. So this one is to help you to prepare your team for brainstorming. What are the atmosphere you need? Uh, okay. Uh, this one you read. Uh, okay. Successful brainstorming, some guidelines, focus, don't critique. No constraint. Uh, then you build on other ideas. Uh, no rejection and all this. Huh? During uh, brainstorming. Then uh, record ideas. Be visible. Huh? Uh, okay. So these are to avoid something that to avoid uh, during the brainstorming. Uh, so these are all these. Huh? So, for example, uh, there's no order. Don't require that everyone take turns. Free flowing ideas is wanted. Huh? So this one is uh, uh, during brainstorming. This one is the the ground rules. So everyone can speed up. During brainstorming, uh, you are you are encouraging everyone to speak. So it's a free flow idea. So you can speak whatever you think you you need to talk, right? And so on. Uh, okay, so this one uh, is a very long, long chapter. I will go in the first one, then we stop 3.30. Okay, 10 more minutes. Okay, so this is a development process and organization. I adopt this textbook. It's a new textbook. Okay. So, we talk about product development process. So you have a concept development and adapting process. Okay. So uh, let's say uh, we take this uh, security alarm as our sample for discussion. So this is a Tyco, Tyco products. They, they designed a security alarm system. Right. Uh, okay. So these are the question when they develop the products. Okay. Key products activities. 
and milestone standards, role expert, and so on. Uh. But I want you to show you to one important process. Uh, this is the definition of process. What is a process in product driven process? What is the definition of process? It's a sequence of steps. Uh, for example, you 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 cooking something, you assembly something. There's a process. Okay, so this one just uh, for your reference. What is product development process? It is a definition, right? So well developed, useful reason. Uh, this one you read lah. Why you need a good process? Read lah. QA planning management all this. I want you to stop you at here. A generic product development process consists of one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this one is when you see the question asks you to explain product development process using generic process development process. You need to draw. Not draw, la, but you need to call out one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's basically very similar to what we discussed this morning. This morning we have five phrases, but if the question asks you or forces you to discuss using generic product development process, you use this chart. You mentioned planning, concept, System level design, design, uh, detail design, testing, and production level. It basically is quite similar to what we discussed this morning, but this is having six process. Okay. Uh, so uh, don't confuse with the morning one and this one. Uh. If you see the question asks you to develop using generic product development, you use this six process. Okay. So this is. Uh, for example, marketing scenario, what they do during planning, they get defined market segment, they watch for opportunities. What they do when they concept development, they when they development collect customer needs and so on. System level design, they develop a plan to product option. For example, if uh, this one is like if you want to sell a, a insurance products, you with the planning, you look at the market segment you want to sell, the insurance plan, then concept development, you identify the customer needs or you benchmark other insurance company. Then you system level design, you go and develop a detail what you covered for your insurance plan. Right? So for example, the insurance, the medical card and all this, uh, hospitalization plan, all this. Detail design, you go and develop how you sell the pro program of how to sell the insurance plan, plan. Testing refinement, this one you go for launch the material and all this. This one is in the marketing approach. Huh? Then production, you go and approach the key customers or process or your pool of customers. Okay. So if you're in a design, apply the, these generic steps. Planning, if you design, you access new technologies. Concept development, you investigate. System level design, you further design the, uh, the design. Detail design, you put in geometry, material, tolerance. Testing, you over, run overall tests and so on. Then you production wrap up. Okay. So for example, the graphic card and all this. Huh? Manufacturing also have their own example that you see on the screen here. But you go through six generic process. Okay. Uh, okay. In planning, you read lah. Huh? So planning, start with planning. We we uh, in generic textbook explanation. This is phrase zero. Phrase zero. Phrase one. Phrase two. Phrase three. Phrase four. Phrase five. So the output, again, you have input and output. Output of this planning or phrase zero is project mission statement. Okay. Concept development is phrase number one. 
is zero, uh, is phrase number one. So your output is you need to have your target market, alternate product concept. For example, uh, a concept car, right? You come up with a concept. Then system level, you go into very detailed concept. You just a draft of what you want to do. But when you system level, you start to have some specification already. Okay, more detail. You use CAD software to draw the things, right? So initial plan. You also consider how you do the assembly and so on. Okay, output of this phrase is preliminary process flow diagram. Okay, detailed design is go into very very. Detailed design is, is a complete specification, including all the tooling that you need. Output is a control documentation, like this. You have all the dimension, right? All the spec, engine spec, and all this. Then you go into um, three critical during design detail is material production and rumbus performance. Okay, so the one you see here is all the material for the car. Right. Testing refinement is to do the construction evaluation. This is a prototype for Mazda. Right. It's a supercar. It's a supercar. Right. Uh, it's working. Uh, it's working, but not yet launched into the market. Okay, so it's a prototype. Then testing refinement, we call it alpha prototype. This is a Dyson Dyson early prototypes for vacuum. Right, so you have a uh, alpha prototypes. So what is alpha prototypes? They are tested whether the product will work as designed and satisfy the customer needs. You have alpha, you have beta. So this is a Dyson air mask filter with the headset. So alpha become beta. Beta is a intended production process, uh, but may not be assembly using intended final assembly process. So this is a you 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 iterate already it means to you change the alpha into beta. Beta is a more stable products. Okay, so when it become alpha, change to beta. Beta means you already tested for so many times and make sure it works, uh, and it's ready for mass production already. Okay, uh, beta is more on the liabilities. Uh, liabilities, for example, GoPro. You know GoPro previously. The alpha prototype is quite bad, uh, but then they they come to beta already. Then they start to sell hotcakes. Uh. Okay, production ramp up is production space, and so on. Uh. Okay, so all this you read. Okay. Okay, so I think we stop here. Okay, we stop here. Um, we try to conclude chapter seven by this uh, Friday. Okay, Friday.